Are you a student studying wine or spirits certifications? Are you interested in learning about best practices in studying and pedagogy techniques? My name is Malcolm Lamont. I'm happy to walk you through study strategies for wine and spirits certifications. A presentation I've prepared for students uh, such as yourself studying for wine qualifications with Wine and Spirit Education Trust or uh, Court of Master Sommeliers or uh, any wine and spirits uh, certification. I uh, hold a Bachelor of Education, which I completed in 2012, as well as a graduate degree in Education Studies in Curriculum, Teaching and Learning Studies. An important question is what's your why? What's going to make you get out of bed to study first thing on a cold morning? Or when you get home from work and have to put in two hours of studying? What's going to keep you going through those days, months, years of studying that will help you gain those certifications in wines and spirits? Here we have a quote from uh, Theodore Roosevelt in Citizenship in a Republic. So our learning objectives for this webinar is to cover what's your why, which we've done, as well as study strategies. Think of this as the coach giving the game plan uh, to the players, uh, which is you. Uh, so the important ones are knowing the curriculum. That's the most important of this uh, study strategies, as well as theory of margin we'll talk about and a concept called spiraling. Then we'll go into study tips. This is something that can help you practice day after day. Uh, so that you're ready for uh, your final exam on game day. And the study tips we'll talk about include time management, as well as uh, material that you'll cover. This is the most important construct within study tips. And practicing exam skills as well. And then for exam day itself, I have some skills, tips, and strategies you can use to help maximize your chances of success on your final exam. So starting with study strategy of knowing the curriculum, I've put a red asterisk. This is the perhaps certainly one of the most important and one of the main major regions, re, major reasons why uh, students have a hard time uh, getting studying the right content and studying enough of the right content that they can write the exam confidently and pass the exam um, after all the all that time of studying. So uh, I've heard no numerous times students who have studied material, read books, read extra books, they already had a ton of knowledge and they learned and learned and learned, uh, but maybe missed the right parts of the curriculum or didn't know what was going to be examinable or how the exam would be set. So knowing the curriculum is a key to studying for Wine and Spirit Education Trust qualifications, same as Court of Master Sommeliers and other Wine and Spirits bodies. This is the idea of beginning with the end in mind. Uh, so you begin with what you're going to, the body of knowledge you will have by the end of your studies. Uh, when you go to sit, uh, by the end I mean writing the exam at the end of your uh, course. So from Stephen Covey's Habits of, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Curriculum is from the Latin word curare, which means to run, the course you run. Um, so this is the, the track, if you will, or the content that you're going to cover in the course as you uh, run the course of your uh, spirits or wine qualification. For example, there's the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, WSET, has a specification. This is uh, uh, made up of many parts, several parts, and it's included in each of their courses for each of their subjects, whether it's wine, spirits, sake, or beer. They have a specification for each level, one, two, three, and four. And within the specification, for example, level three in wines, you'll have uh, the curriculum. So this is the syllabus, the learning outcomes. This is the main component, the major component of the specification for WSET is the learning outcomes and the, uh, the curriculum. Uh, so these learning outcomes are vital to know. And it's similar for Court of Master Sommeliers has on their website, mastersommeliers.org. They have uh, curriculum guides uh, for introductory and certified courses as well as other uh, documents as well. So these are vital to look over 
Um, if you aren't sure how to read them, they're they're fairly uh, weight, you know, fairly thick. You know, it's like almost like legalese, but um, you know, in education, and it's about wine and spirits education. So a little, you know, fair bit more interesting, and um, takes a bit of deductive work, but it's very important to go through that process. Certainly at the beginning of your course, and if you're well prepared at the end of your course as well to make sure you've covered it all. Uh, but go through that document at least twice to ensure you know what learning outcomes, learning objectives you'll be responsible for on the exam. And that'll make the exam go a lot smoother. You, you won't have any uh, surprises. So an interesting construct in andragogy, A-N-D-R-A-G-O-G-Y, uh, is the teaching of adults, the theory of teaching adults. And an interesting construct in andragogy is the theory of margin. So the, here you have a diagram on the screen, and it is the idea that at any given time, adults with the responsibilities they have in their lives for themselves and their families and their uh, communities, uh, their professional responsibilities or their job responsibilities, these make up what's called the load, and that can, that can weigh down and take time, energy, and uh, hopefully not too much and hopefully not uh, to the point where you're, it means stopping your studies. This is another major region, region, reason why um, adult learners uh, get, get pulled out of courses or, or can't finish, don't finish a course. So the idea is balancing the power with the load. Power can be economic wealth, uh, physical health, social contacts, and coping skills can help you navigate the weight of the load and keep the margin in balance. So the margin being the difference between the two. So this is vital. It means if your load is getting heavier, uh, reach out to your social contacts or perhaps uh, you know manifest or fi find some economic wealth to help cover the cost of wines and spirits. Or These are just examples, but uh, McCluskey's theory of margin indicates there's a balance between the demands in an adult learner's life and the power that they have to cope and manage and complete their studies. Another very interesting concept, this is a pedagogy or a teaching kids, but also for adults. And it's uh, an advanced level, it's called spiraling. And the idea is that uh, you take uh, several sources, three to six sources, and take the first source. For example, in the diploma, I would start with the Oxford Companion to Wine by Jancis Robinson. Uh, and you would read through that, through the curriculum. So you're reading your curriculum content, whether it's Bordeaux, Burgundy, Germany, uh, Italy, read through the whole, everything you're responsible for, once with the Oxford Companion to Wine, for example. And once you've done that, you've got a good base. And then, so you go over that content again with your next source. It might be the World Atlas of Wine, or any large, uh, reputable, well-written, uh, uh, reputable wine or spirits text that will help you cover the curricular content. And so you go through it a second time and as you're going through the, the curriculum you're increasing your knowledge up and up and up but it's going around uh, the curriculum. So running the course of the curriculum around each time and after three, uh, certainly four, five, six times at most I would say, uh, you'll have a mastery of the subject. It really ingrains the content in your mind and helps you uh, re reproduce it on, on the exam itself. So this is a very effective technique. I've shared it with a number of students. Uh, hasn't worked for everybody. It's not, uh, it is very labor intensive and time intensive. So if you're, if you're more kind of a, a pressed for time, or if your McCluskey's uh, uh, load is, is heavier, then you might, not, you might not want to go through you know, the curriculum six, six times or three to six times. Uh, but if you can do this at least two or three to six times, uh, it can be very, very effective in really ingraining that, that knowledge of wine, spirits, and, um, and other subjects uh, into, your, into your head. It is a, a subject that covers all, all subjects. You can add uh, extra materials like uh, uh, Decanter and Wine, wine Spectator, Trade Press. Uh, as well as blogs, YouTube videos, and uh, other content as well. But the main crux of it is is going through the curriculum, you know, once one major source entirely through the curriculum, and then a second and third, and, and up to six. So let's look at some study tips for actually the grinding, the day-to-day -day work of studying. 
you know, think of yourself as a student and, uh, and dedicate some time and uh, energy, dedicate some time and energy to your studies. You'll, you'll have to do it. There's no way to do it without um, going through the work. You know, at, at level three in wines, level four diploma, level two in spirits, level three in spirits, you can't, you can't just fake it through. Uh, you'll have to do the work. So carve out the time you need. It uh, may be more than you think, you know, probably more than you think. So really give it a good go. And some people like to do, you know, what I call Sunday marathon. You know, if you're working five, six days a week and you have one day in the week to really do it, you know, half a day's full day worth of study, go for it. That can work. I have seen it be very effective, uh, although stressful. Uh, uh, and another technique that is also very effective and really uh, can really get you into a routine and kind of a, a on the roll. Um, in a roll is um, every day two hours of study, for example, for the diploma. I'd put in two hours every day, whether that was, you know, the day I went, uh, flew overseas, or, you know, the day, the day your cousin got married, or just a Monday, or, you know, every day after work, before work, during work, whatever it was, it was two hours every day, or if it's 45 minutes every day, great. Uh, but doing it every day. And if you miss a day, that's all right. But uh, try and try and make it up or um, catch up the next day. Certainly don't don't miss twice. And this can be a very effective technique at marching through the, the syllabus, the curriculum with dedicated time each day. So this is, uh, I've put two asterisks on reading lectures webinar. So this is the content you're going to cover, whether it's a uh, chapter, uh, you know, an entry in the Oxford Companion to Wine, or um, you know, a book on viticulture or vinification, uh, whatever, whatever material. If it's the textbook for your course, level two in spirits, level three in wines, level two in wines, um, you really have to do the reading. You can supplement it with online lectures if you can find some good sources. I find Jimmy Smith with the uh, West London Wine School on YouTube uh, to be excellent, and uh, webinars can can help do that. So you must do the work. Why do I have an elephant with a bite out of it? Uh, one of my favorite uh, quotes is from a master of wine, Eugene Malinchuk, who says, how do you eat an elephant in response to accomplishing a hard task like the diploma in Wines and Spirits? And he says, take a, uh, one, bite, eat, take one bite at a time. So how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And that really is the, the trick. You know, if you put the whole thing, try and do it all at once or procrastinate or you come up with some obstacles or you haven't done the work every day, uh, it can be just too much by, by the end and, and, you, and you might make it and, and you might not. Uh, and that's all right, uh, but uh, to, to, to take a bite each day or if, you, if you're doing consistent you know, 10, 15, 20 hours a week on your school, on your studies, uh, you can have success. Try to grow by 1% every day. Uh, and the key there is every day. So if you grow by 1%, 1 1.01, Every day for a month, you'll be about one and a third times ahead of where you are, just with interest and um, you know compounding uh, math. Uh, but all the math aside, if you go by one percent, one point zero one every day for a year, then uh, that adds up to thirty-seven times, almost thirty-eight times. So so uh, quite a well, multiple times ahead of where you were when you started your studies. So that really is one of the key. Uh, strategies you can use. So make sure to read the curriculum document, all textbooks and study guides that come with your course. These are valuable information well put together and in many cor courses such as the Society of Wine Educators, the, uh, the Wine and Wine Scholar Guild, the French Wine Scholar for example, WSET, uh, state that all of the examinable content of the curriculum come directly from the textbook and study guide alone. So you can supplement with Karen McNeil you know, Wine Bible is fantastic. Um, there's many, many books. Uh, Wine Folly Online uh, is also great uh, uh, qu qualified sources that explain it really well. And uh, you can supplement it with e-learning if you want in, in those courses, as I mentioned. Uh, but try to stay on task. So this is uh, something that one of the major reasons that people you know, struggle with their studies is they're putting in two hours a day or three or more uh, hours of study each day. Uh, but you, maybe you go down rabbit holes and you're clicking on Cabernet Sauvignon and then it takes you to Kunawara and then you're reading an article on, you know, wins in 1997 and then all of a sudden you're out, out of the curriculum. So it can happen really easily, uh, especially nowadays. 
uh, with with um, hyperlinks and, and all of that. So and things demanding pulling on our attention. So how do you stay on task? Try to set a goal for your study period of the curriculum you're going to get through. So if that curriculum is Left Bank Bordeaux, today you're going through that. And if you start studying on, you know, Pomerol or um, Southwest France or anything like that, you, you pull yourself back in and get back onto the curriculum. So it should be laid out in the document the exact items you're studying uh, for the curriculum for your course. Things like texts, uh, you know, textbooks, visual learning, audio learning, audio visual, kinesthetic, learning by movement or learning with you know, sitting on a bouncy ball. Uh, these are all very effective and it's not, it's been disproven that there's one style. You know, it's not that any given learner has a visual style or an audio style. You may prefer that content, that's fine, uh, but you can still, and you can still benefit from kinesthetic, audio visual, text, you know, the, all of these are available to help you learn. You don't have to limit yourself to just uh, podcasts or um, visual, audio visual. And last question is, do you like music? in the background when you study. So you can enter in the comments if you're if you like to play uh, music. Is it classical? Is it uh, I like progressive house? Um, instrumental? Uh, so do you like music while you study? So for exams, exam writing is a skill. This was something that I learned in my undergrad where um, uh, a, call, a, stu a fellow, a friend said uh, that writing the LSATs, uh, the the entrance exams for law school, are is a skill. So the more you write it, uh, the better you get at it. If you're learning each time, growing that by that one percent, growing each day, then as long as you're learning, you can learn at how to write uh, an exam. And it can take some time. These are not intuitive, as, especially if you um, have difficulty with exams, or there can be a lot of factors that are hard to work in. Uh, so it is a skill that you can practice. So I strongly suggest for level three and above uh, to practice writing exams. For level two with WSET, you can practice multiple choice. Uh, but certainly for level three, you can practice the multiple choice and short answer. And diploma, you should be writing out, you know, for, for sparkling wine in WSET diploma, you should be writing out, you know, traditional method, a, a note on Charmat, a note on Champagne, a note on Blanc de Blanc. Um, and, and just anything within the curriculum, just practice, practice, practice. And uh, if you can get feedback, that's uh, uh, awesome as well. That, that can really help. Uh, for tasting, you can practice your, your practical exams uh, by having a quote unquote plan. So what I mean by this is, you know, are you gonna taste the, if there's two wines, are you gonna taste the white wine first or the red wine first? Um, are you going to do a visual and then do a, uh, nose and then mouth and then palate or other way around or so just have a rough idea don't don't lay it in stone because things can change on the exam there can be unexpected variables uh, but try to have an idea of visualizing how you're going to approach that task in the practical exam and a palate cleanser like a little uh, bottle of um, fresh and a or um, you know uh, uh, pinot grigio can can just freshen your palate and and uh, make sure you're, you're calibrated and the acidity is uh, going well and you can probably taste better uh, for your practical exam. For exam day itself, you've done the studying, you had the coach walk you through it, uh, you did the work yourself, you, you stayed on task, you covered as much content as you could, as often as you could, maybe you spiraled, uh, everything was ready and here you are at exam day. So let's talk about uh, your state your attitude and writing clearly. So are you an anxious test taker? There are resources available. Um, I like Jason Stevenson's uh, meditation, guided meditation for exam success is excellent. Uh, but you can listen to anything you like, like to calm your nerves. Don't forget that it's natural to be anxious and natural to have your heart kind of going. Uh, try and work with that instead of against it and allow it to give you passion and energy and uh, enthusiasm for showing what you've done throughout the study, showing that you know your content, that you've worked so hard to uh, learn. Be in a good condition, so uh, uh, don't stay up till two in the morning resting. I did the best I could to take the day before my exams for diploma. I took it off studying, 
I took it off everything. I walked around, you know, Toronto. I maybe I got a massage or whatever it was. You just uh, relaxed and tried to get into a good, good state, uh, well hydrated as well. Make sure you know where you're going and when you need to be there, and and be there. Um, I, you know, maybe go the the day before to see where it is, uh, or at least for sure arrive with lots of time. Not too much time. You don't want to be there an hour and a half or two hours early. Uh, but make sure there can be variables like traffic or construction. Um, you know, maybe maybe your kid's um, uh, is sick and has to stay home, so you need to arrange for that and still want to make it to your exam. There can be a lot of very last minute variables. So give yourself enough time, you know, uh, to be ready. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I got in my exam writing for WSET diploma was give it all you got. Uh, you know, I arrived at the exam, I had enough time, I'd studied, I'd put my, put everything into studying and I was there ready to write and, uh, and the, the instructor said, you know, are you ready for this? I said, yeah, I think so. He said, give it all you got. And I thought, yeah, that's okay. And then I gave it all I got and it, uh, that was a highly, uh, positive outcome. So I offer you that as well. So give it, give it all you got. Uh, you know, it's almost like I've mentioned before, it's like doing battle. You know, if you're writing a WSET diploma in wines exam, you know you're 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 doing battle with the examiner. You're you're trying to break down their doubt and break down their uncertainty that you know your stuff. And and as you write clearly and uh, show you demonstrate your knowledge, answering the question, uh, the whole question, and nothing but the question, uh, then uh, this will this will help do battle and win the battle and, and eventually get your unit and and uh, diploma. So answer the question, the whole question, and nothing but the question. You can go a little bit outside bounds, but uh, generally uh, if people aren't passing the diploma exam questions, for example, or level three in wines with WSET, the short answer, then it can be because um, they didn't write enough about the whole question. So maybe it's a question on South Africa, on, on um, uh, uh, on, on Walker Bay and you're not mentioning the the cool Benguela climate I mean this is this is not at diploma level but uh, in any event uh, you do want to answer the question the whole question so keep keep writing anything that's can be related go for it and that's the skill as well as knowing what to write and what to leave out uh, so if it's a question on red red uh, uh, aromatic uh, red grape varieties and you're writing about muscat then uh, that's outside of the question, obviously. So um, try to approach it that way, especially for wine and spirit education trust exams. Uh, plan your answers. This is good. This has helped me with uh, Society of Wine Educators certified wine educator to have um, just five minutes. Do do an outline. It's almost like a mind map where you have the main points you're going to write. And then two or three points about you know one of them, and then three or four points about the other, and then one or two points about the last one, and then you kind of flesh it out, and then and then you've kind of developed your your approach to answering this this challenging question, and uh, writing with success, and uh, manage your time. That's the, another important factor where people just run out of time. So practice that. Practice for diploma exams. I remember unit uh, four and five uh, was. Um, sparkling and fortified or five and six sorry and um and the diploma in wines and spirits and uh you'd have 10 minutes per question for each fortified or spirits question there are three parts to the theory questions and you had 10 minutes each so just practice that and once you get good at that you know if you if you do practice it you can start to write 10 and then let's say you're going over you say okay just stop i've done what i can in this 10 minutes I'm going to go to the next question because they, they weighed at 33% each in that example. And yet you have to answer the full exam. So even the best two answers can often leave you at a disadvantage if you, if you don't have enough time to complete. Watch your handwriting, uh, if, if applicable, and uh, do the best you can. And then typing as well in the uh, CWE Certified Wine Educator. I was typing my response to the theory question, theory essay. And I was in a exam laboratory or a testing center, and uh, you know I could hear I could hear very loud clicks, and you just have to keep going. So something like that, you know, you don't can't really plan for, but uh, stay focused, give it all you got, and um, the typing ended up uh, being fine. 
Well, thanks very much uh, for uh, watching this 25-minute uh, uh, webinar. If you've made it this far, I wish you best of luck. Uh, and if you've watched this, great, thanks very much. Um, just a little summary, you signed up for the course, met with instructors, studied, practiced your exam writing skills, and showed up to write the exam, so cheers uh, to you. And good luck. Thanks so much.